I think we'll, I think we'll, we'll hi, hi guys. Hi. hi. Let's see here. Uh, you know, we, we kind of like said hello to one another, um, but it would be probably beneficial with such a small group to quickly introduce ourselves. Um, and then in doing so, give us a little idea of what uh, each and every one of you is looking for to gain from this because it was a little bit tough to gauge, you know, what level people are coming in with. So just maybe think about it in the context of from one to five, you know, how like five being, you know, professional audio um, and one being like, how do you plug in a speaker? Where do you guys each fall? That way we can kind of like tailor this to, to what what each one's needs are. It's, it's a small, small enough group that I think that we can disseminate a lot of information and really uh, uh, help everybody out, hopefully, with, with the things. We have some, some pros here. So. And also the category of things you want to hear about when it comes to sound, because there's a number of different things. Which group is this? Sound. We went to the Better, room. you're not <laughs> leaving now. <laughs> <laughs> that intro was for you. <laughs> oh, well. I take it back. I think that's over there. Oh, okay. I mean, we all look like multiple enough. <laughs> okay. We, we should slow it down because uh, I'm almost out of material what and I'm more than three minutes between RCA and <laughs> But for real, do you say eight inch chat or? Uh, I'll start and then we'll go around left. Um, uh, we do a, a sound. A, yeah, you're welcome to do it. Oh, it's just sound. We didn't know. Sound. This is about sound. Sound works. Actually, Kramer, uh, why don't you start? <laughs> seriously, seriously, you start. To tell sure. Them. So, and also, I think on, on top of that, like, what else do you guys? Is there anything, any questions to be answered? I suppose, um, whether it's sound related or actually just camera related. You know, we've been doing this for a while. So, um, Kramer, uh, district, been with. Burning, I've been going to Burning Man. This will be my 20th coming up. And we did Deep End for quite a while before that, which is also a sound camp, if you, if you may or may not have heard of it. Um, and we've sort of grown over the years, just kind of like from a box truck, literally, to, you know, with like a couple of Mackies and a, and a folding table to what we have now, which has become more, you know, semi-professional setup. Um, and yeah, just anything we can, like I said, anything we can answer that is related to sound specifically or, or uh, just building a camp, sound camp, or be cool your neighbors, shit like that, then, you know, let's talk about it. I came in late, so I don't want to be the first to ask a question. Oh, but go for it. I got one. Go for it, for it. So my question would be, you know, I've been, you know, a place camp. You are? Oscar, the lead of Lost Oasis. So we're about, I don't know, 60, 70 people last year, maybe 80, I don't know. Um, and our sound thing has become bigger and bigger. We've got like three or four pretty hardcore DJs and a couple of bedroom DJs. And so sound's become a bigger part of the camp. But we're nervous about explaining that in our placement question. Right. Because we don't want to be not placed. Sure. And so as soon as we say, hang on now, you know, ampage is going up and and moving from where we've, you know, come in. Within the have it, are you in the neighborhood you know, area? Well, we were, you know, we're non sector for a couple of years and then they bumped us out to trash and 430. And then we had a huge argument last year. So I have to be really delicate this year as to how we do it. Yeah. But chicken, did I hear someone was from district? Yeah, yeah, we're. Oh, okay. So, Chicken gave me Magnus last year. So, we had Magnus on, you know, a corner, and we had my big shade, and, you know, we did big sound, but we're at 430 and J and K. Right, you're way out of it. And it was like, really? I mean, I've always been of the, of the mind of just be. So, so the reality is, just, uh, Burning Man, was, they never really, like, saw it, sound camps as being, like, would you like to join? No, 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 no please, please. please. Yeah. Come on, Jens, how fast? <laughs> no, Use a chair. I mean, we're actually technically in the actual skills. Oh, excellent. Oh, yeah. Well, we want to do intros. Yeah, we should yeah, do yeah, intros yeah, yeah, yeah. for that question. 
Because nobody else. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Sure. Uh, well, uh, ben from oh, Egypt but, as well. Yeah, I'm sorry. Just to repeat everything Kramer. I don't want to repeat everything Kramer just said. But Please, would you repeat all of it? All of it. Good thing we recorded it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm actually speaking tomorrow uh, on uh, event fundraising and best practices there. So I'm just came to, to join him to talk about music because he's also um, in the code musically as well. So uh, we're, I'm basically here just to answer any questions that you guys may have on Kramer in regards to you know large large scale sounds camps. Um, and we're literally until like three a.m. Yeah, yeah I had to play last night until like show. Show. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. So. I love that, that kick, guys. Uh, by the way, yes. Yes. I'm Anthony, yes. and um, what about yes? yes. Sorry, Peter. If you want me to close the door, I can. Are you through the noise? Let's start with one. Let's close it, yeah? Yeah, yeah right. it's time. I mean, sorry. Uh, Anthony from MaxCon. Um, I guess we've been going for six years, and the core leadership's taking a year off this year, so we're trying to work out what we do. Yeah, okay. ideas, so I'm going to get the Cool. So, um, Belmont, I guess if we're going to go with very many nature now. Um, I was actually, my camp is not really a sound camp. We do like little movies and have a small amount of audio but I'm an IOTC uh, journeyman sound engineer for eight years. I'm also one of the rangers, which means that <laughs> if you have questions about how to never get a noise complaint, what to do if you do get a noise complaint, uh, how to not send your lawyer at us when we're trying to talk to your DJ, that came up last year. Um, <laughs> seriously, what the wow, hell? And basically how to be a good citizen with your sound <clears throat> so that you don't piss off your neighbors and make placement and everyone else super happy. It's kind of what I'm here for. Nice. And so, sound shaping, how to actually um, make your sound go where it was supposed to go and not bouncing off the neighbor's RV so you have a horrible splashback effect. It sounds terrible. Awesome. Uh, I'm Ali. Um, I'm a member of the, the CDS, uh, which is a new team in, in Burning Man, uh, camp development and support team. I'm also uh, one of the, uh, the founders of the CASBA, uh, which is a, a sound camp also. Um, and we were really deeply inspired to do this in a short amount of time, basically. Um, it just kind of, the idea started flowing, so we reached out to the org, and we didn't really know much about what we were doing at all, but that was our first dive into like some of this, which is like the community helping you out, and a lot of other camps helping us and supporting us with information and, 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 and wherever they could. Um, so I've, you know, really, uh, deeply committed to continuing this this uh, flow of information um, and seeing if we can all sort of elevate uh, together. Um, since then, um, it's taken over my life completely. Um, not really by choice, but I'm not unhappy with the, the places it's taken me. Um, and uh, I've always been deeply, 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 deeply into proper, proper sound. Um, like an audiophile and just really deeply into music generally um, and this is a lot now I understand certain bits of it uh, better probably not as not good enough to like explain it that well but uh, you know I'll, I'll do my best and we can kind of talk about how to make you know what you have sound the best or what you should get or you know depending on what you guys want out of this um, so please make that abundantly clear uh, Hi, I'm Vikram. Um, only been to Burning Man four times. Um, a novice in sound, so I'm here to learn. Um, from the Camp Panorama, it's the camp that has stairs that you go up and look at the... Above Burheim? Yeah. Oh, wow. No, I'm just kidding. No, 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 uh, it's, the, it's called Panorama. It's the stairs with slinkies. I don't know if, and we have a mutant vehicle. We just got that last year. And we're trying to get uh, good uh, sound in the vehicle and also not you know, disturb our neighbors when we're parked or when we're coming in from uh, sunrise or sunset, whatever. Uh, so I'm just here to learn and see how we can improve the sound in our car. Cool, I've actually installed two, two systems on our cars. Okay. So I can probably help with some questions. I've installed awesome. two void systems on two different our cars. Nice. Awesome. awesome, but you know, unless they you really sound sound us, but it's like, tell me. <laughs> well, I mean, they're, they also have nice bikes to work with. I mean, they invested in over $50,000 in each of the systems. But the concepts, uh, the concepts so. The concepts is pretty much the same, same. yeah. Um, you know, regarding it's a self-powered speaker or, a, you know, a, a, a power system or all the amps and stuff, so. It's really, it falls if it's in your budget and what you want to work with, but, you know, there's options. Cool. Thank you. 
I'm Esteban. Uh, I actually run the Camp Camp Reno Nation. Uh, this will be our sixth year. We've been fortunate enough to be placed on two o'clock, which is large sound. So since I run the camp, I'm kind of here to learn a little bit more of maybe a way to manage all that kind of stuff, as well as because a good number of our DJs and sound guys are not here, but I do have one of my guys. So. Yeah, I'm Keith. I'm part of Reno Nation. In my eleventh year. I run the sound, everything. Our camp. We're kind of still small scale, but we're in between. Uh, we got Camp Q and everybody else in between us. So we're like mainly kind of run during the daytime. So we also have problems with like, we went through like do a sunrise set. Our kid neighbors were like, hey, it's too early for you guys to be playing music. It's like, we guys been playing all day long. We're just like, we're not, we're not even that loud. But we would get those complaints. Like, it's like, oh, you guys can only play from this time to this time. Like, are you, are you kidding me? And so we get complaints here and there. It's not too bad, but it's just, you know, it's a fight with the neighbors here and there. Uh, so I'm Miles Kelly. DJ name is DJMK, so I'm with the Dusty Rhino, which is an art car. Uh, we tried being a theme camp a couple of years, that didn't quite work out, especially on the Esplanade. Hunt. <laughs> so we got our, uh, put our tails between our legs and just stuck with being an art car. We've kind of bumped along over the last, you know, tw 12 years with Mackies uh, as our sound. We like them, particularly the older ones. It's a, it's a rich sound that it goes with. The, an element of kind of the value of, of the uh, of the rhino, but I've always uh, considered whether or not we should level up, and so the question of whether or not we should do that with, uh, come on in, you guys are welcome. Hey. We're talking about the dusty rhino. Woo. Cool. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, we got yeah. so, uh, but but. We have a couple more. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just the, the, the two-fold reason. One is we do have a fundraiser coming up on the 27th that we were going to ask you guys if you want to participate. <laughs> and the other was if we do want to level up from a system perspective, I'd be interested in some options if you guys might think. Uh, I'm, my name's Erica. I'm with Skinny Kitty Tea House um, and the Crystal Ship. It's our art car. And um, my boyfriend's a sound guy, so I knew more about sound than I should <laughs> or want to and uh, you know we're, we're kind of always uh, uh, you know finding a sound system and getting everything dialed has always been one of our challenges with our camp and our car system. Finding like a, a rental system? Or we like have yeah like we've uh, gotten from Justin who was supposed to be here uh, magnetic and we yeah had, that's, we my, had that's, a, that's my sound guy. Yeah yeah like. <laughs> but um but uh, you know, it's always been kind of a challenge and expensive, and so just kind of, and we just have one party during the week that we need our sound system for. But now that we've got our kind of bigger new incarnation of our art car, you'll need more than that. Yeah, say if question. you only have the one, there might be a play where you could share <laughs> the sound yeah. with somebody. Yeah. You know, yeah. especially exactly. if it's like maybe an art car or something with with a rig that would maybe plug into you. Yeah. I know there was one pretty not notable art car that used to do that all the time. Um, and, and, you know, but, you know, we can talk about that. That's a good segue into where I'm coming okay. from because our sound has become a bigger part of the camp. Yeah. So we've got, I've got a fairly, you know, top end, you know, the, the fine air stuff, but not good speakers and, and not good sound. So, so we're taking a, a view now whether we partner with an art car and and beef up our sound a little bit, or do we go full sound and become a sound camp, or do you know do we do we do that sort of partnership thing? I'm like I'm, look, I'm just the moderator here, but I want to tell you off the top oh, my yeah, yeah. Uh, opinion from like buzzes that I feel and hear. Um, uh, it's better to kind of uh, uh, preempt a big issue that you might end up having by blasting sound really loud in a neighborhood where you're not supposed to so if you don't like I, I, I would try I would push I would say like being as transparent with your sound ambitions as possible yeah. in order to get the best placement possible but, but does that then jeopardize your chances of being placed because I don't want to fuck up my I, placement I, so I, I, I don't I don't think it would at all it would just it would just maybe put put you into certain areas okay, so that would be yeah. 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 if you are honest about what you are going to do and you go out there and you do the thing that you said you were going to do, you're fine. I've always done what I've said I'm well, going to so do, you, but last year got a little bit sketchy. Right. So, like, one of the big ones is, are you a sound camp, like a loud sound camp? Yeah. If you go into a neighborhood because you said, oh, yeah, we're going to have some music, a couple DJs, yeah. and you are causing sound complaints three blocks down, <laughs> yeah, you're going to have a problem. 
Um, okay. If you say, we're going to have really loud sound, and they put you out at two, and you're not quite as loud as one of the other camps at two, you haven't jeopardized anything, yeah. and you yeah. may be able to say, hey, you know what? We were actually like not actually loud enough for that. We're we'll loud. We'll bring it back down. Yeah. But if you stick with 20 dB, at, I mean 90 dB at 20 B, you're yeah. within the rules, and, yeah, and that no matter where you're at. Let me speak to that one real quick. 85 dB is hearing damage. Well, you are, at 90 dB at 20 feet, you are you, that is like such an upper bound yeah. that you have already screwed up. If you ever like, we actually set that one specifically as a if you ever even come close to tapping them, you screwed it up. Okay. So the main guideline I would use for if you're going to do it in the city, aim the speakers through your own camp. So if you have like here's we've your always done that. so yeah so it's like here's your stage yeah. here's your camp put the speakers here at the at the street coming back if you can't sleep I guess you learn something don't point that out to someone else who did not choose that chicken gave us magnus and it was a stage and so all yeah. of our sound went up and it fucked things up because we were going over all our RVs and we yep. didn't have that yeah this is why I was talking about shaping sound it's one of the biggest yeah. causes of noise complaints well keep in mind the other thing is that just because it's loud doesn't mean it's going to be yeah. <laughs> so you want it's better if it's quieter and not like clipping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And won't piss people off. And the other yeah. thing is, you like, know, just because like, you have a big sound system doesn't need, mean you need to be literally vibrating people's lives. Right. We have a gigantic fucking function one system, and it, you can stand in the middle of an expo and have a conversation yeah. because it sounds better yeah. and people don't complain about it. But if it's if it was fucking at eleven. It would be vibrating people's RDs apart, and nothing would be. Happening. And we've been in the same place for. It does get like that sometimes. Years. Though. I'm actually just saying. It does get like that sometimes. <laughs> but 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 by, part by of Saturday. Saturday. <laughs> 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 Saturday. Well, he on Friday. But part of that's having having guys like this in the booth, always having somebody in there to monitor, make sure the DJs yeah. aren't blasting into the reds. Because yeah. that'll happen even with some and of those when pro, it starts pro sounding like shit is when people are like, oh, why, what the, what the fuck? You're like, turn it off. You know, not us, yeah, but yeah. other people. Like, yeah. they, they bitch about the people around them. One of the sneaky Because it streets. sounds horrible. Yeah. It's super loud, and it's just irritating. And so, like, you have to be conscious. I mean, we have a different situation. Yeah. Because people, people know what they're getting into if they're going to camp near us. But we still have, like, a quality sound versus, like, you know, just getting two Mackies and turning it up as loud as you can because it's not loud enough. And yeah, it actually, sounds like shit and people complain. The really biggest, young. the camps that we get them, like some of the biggest sound complaints from are not the massive professional level huge speaker things. It's the camp with this, I, I see it all the time. I hate this setup. Every time I walk into it, I'm like crying when I see it. And it is your DJ. He's got his things here. He's got two speakers right here next to him, yeah. pointing out that way. Yeah. No fucking monitor speaker, and it's aimed right at an RV across the street. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because the DJ doesn't know how loud it is. Because the speakers are pointed that way. Yeah. So the DJ's like, I want it loud enough for me to dance to right here, crank. And now it's bouncing off that, coming back here. Now people are hearing this to the music because they're actually hearing the echo, mm -hmm. and it's way too loud. 90% of your problems are solved by putting a fucking monitor speaker next to your DJ that is playing at the same volume automatically as the speaker coming out here. So the DJ is deafening himself before he's deafening anyone else. Well, and just having, you know, like somebody monitoring it. You know, yeah. like it, it sounds like shit. Monitor, but, monitor. Yeah, the dance floor, then, <laughs> yeah. You know, turn it down. Have a monitor and have a monitor. Yeah, we only have it's, one, it's, one complaint. It's super one on one and, and basic, but if anybody here doesn't know this, having monitors for the DJ is. Okay, does everyone here know what a monitor speaker essential. is? Nobody, nobody doesn't know what that room. means? You might be in the wrong room. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, I mean, there should be this standard. I mean, we all should know that standard. And everybody, that should be a common knowledge. There should be. And there should be like a union of some people that get together and kind of talk about these things like I'm you're doing today. literally in that union. I mean, this is great. <laughs> but I mean, it sounds like, you know, people don't really know what, no. what the, the, the basic thing is. And I think that that should be a, yeah. a thing to share. Right, and that's the basic, the basic thing. All right. Yeah. Like, all, right, all, right, all right, is it like, can we just walk through the, the is this what we were talking about? Can we do it? That's a great basic, basic stuff. Sure, 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 sure. sure. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. My turn. Sorry, sorry. Okay. sorry. Uh, I'm Gustavo. I'm, uh, uh, I'm not sure what camera I'm going to be in yet, but I'm, I do work for Burning Man in online learning, so I'm kind of putting the sound here cool. for you guys. <laughs> and I'm interested in sound because uh, I also, I'm a bedroom DJ, and when I go to Burning Man, I, I go where my ear takes me. <laughs> Yeah. You know, and I go, oh, and I go to explore that. Yeah. You know, that's how. And then I found really amazing music. And sometimes I, I find really shitty music, too. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so I, just, I let my ear guide me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I'm Gustavo. Laughing John, BRC3PO. We have a um, 
a sound system and a stage, but we never even get close to 90 dB at 20 feet, so we, so far we're no problem. But I'm just here to kind of hear best practices and some ideas yeah. that mm -hmm. I might be able to get from here. Um, I'm not a disappointing way to spend 20 minutes. That's my playa name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on Camp Disorient. I'm known as HRH. Oh. Um, we are at one of the longest running sound camps at Burning Man. And for the first time this last year, we actually did what we said we were going to do in our application, but for the first time we're in a new neighborhood and received complaints for the first time. So that was something that we grappled with as a camp. And now we're kind of reevaluating like what we are as a sound camp and what that means. And does it mean we have to have a multi million dollar function one system? Can we have a more intimate group? So I just kind of want to learn best practices and find out, you know, how we can be a better neighbor and to be a <clears throat> uh, for those of you that came in late, I'm Kramer from District. Uh, this, I think I said earlier, would be my 20th Burning Man, so I've been there a few times. For all the different genres of mu music fads that have happened in <laughs> 20 years. Um, and just been, I did the deep end for eight years, I think we did that. And uh, started District in 2010. It's kind of like changed the name. Rebranded it, I guess. Um, I've been doing sound since I was carrying records out there. So, the turntables and a box truck. <laughs> um, and I mentioned earlier, for people, we literally started as a, a five ton box truck with a couple of Mackies and a folding table and just giving out drinks. And it slowly evolved over time. We never really set out to like just do a big sound camp. It just, over the years, has like, incrementally evolved into what it is. So, and not on along the way, get, you know, our sound started out as something small, you know, powered speakers, up to like a small, what, what, I guess what we have, I guess who we used to, JK used to do our sound, JK and then we sort of transitioned system. over to some guys out of LA called Funkworks, and they bring their Function One, and we've been using them for the past like <coughs> six, uh, six years, six years or so, probably seven years. And you know we have a full-time sound engineer all day who's sitting <coughs> on his laptop above our bar tuning the system nonstop, pretty much every song. Not something everybody can afford or wants to do, but as I mentioned a few minutes ago, having somebody um, that is your sound engineer, even if it's just the guy, you know, the guy or girl who set up the speakers for you, like that's their job to make sure that if it's clipping, turn it down so it sounds better to get back to your point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or just keep the, the, the volume at the resource level. Right. So, yeah. right. Uh, well, Ben from District, double what everything Kramer just said. <laughs> uh, that's pretty much it. I always have any faces rolling here, so I'd rather just spend the time and let them speak. Yeah. I'm Fixer from <clears throat> Rupal Camp, and we do live bluegrass music. Go and um, so my thought, you know, the panel I suggested was a panel on bringing live music to the burn, which is yeah. not so much. Right not now. Not <laughs> Dilemma is on the uh, council with me, and he said, you know, he told me this funny story. He's like, we put all the panel suggestions together, and <clears throat> one stack was for sound. And yours was, why not a panel on bringing live music to the burn? Because it's hard to do, bringing real musicians in. And he said, yours was on the top, and it had a giant red question mark, and a big Y, and an exclamation mark. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, maybe that's why we do need to have that. <laughs> no. yeah. but, but the hardest thing, I think, for us is we don't need a fancy, we don't need a function one. You know, we right. just need a decent sound. I mean, I've been running sound since more, most of y'all were born, you know, but um, since 71, you know, but, but um, it's hard to bring live musicians to the room. Yeah. You know, instruments and mics and musicians have to work. It's not like one guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's my guy. Uh, I'm uh, C. Flay uh, or Kaplan. Um, uh, I uh, I work with the with the Casbah uh, and uh, uh, magnetic sound. Uh, I've uh, been doing Burning Man for uh, a lot longer than a decade. I remember setting up uh, Sound for District when they were the event, you know, a while back. Nice. Right on. Uh, <laughs> uh, I might do that. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
UK. Um, and uh, I've uh, worked uh, the, with the sound and performance team at Center Camp uh, for six years. Um, but the last couple years, uh, I've been uh, as well doing the sound there. And uh, yeah, I, uh, I set it up, uh, and, uh, watch it, control it, um, make sure, you know, we were talking about sound and uh, making sure it's, it's, it, it, it's, it's a full-time, someone's full-time job to always keep, keep their, keep their ear on the system because, you know, the sound can vary, you know, from, from any time from DJ to DJ, uh, from song to song, um, uh, and then you have, you know, if you're, if, if you're running, you know, you know, every, every night, you know, and you have a big sound system, uh, you need to think about, uh, gain staging of how of how you work that evening and how you bring that energy and you, you you'll 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 bring it up and level it out you know and there's times where you know you can you can push it you know and, and have a harder drive because you know these systems can turn up to 11 um, and uh, and at some points you know uh, it, there there's times where you know that's warranted for a uh, time because you can bring things to these you know amazing Crescendos, but at the same time, you know, to bring it up and to just stick things into, uh, uh, it, you know, to to the red and leave it there. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's hot. Uh, I just want to underscore something that, that he said um, that I would think I thought going into this would probably be the biggest takeaway from from this is the number one ingredient is someone who gives a shit somebody with common sense that's paying attention. If you have that element, uh, it, you know, just watch, just learning about it a little bit, looking at it, listening to it, making sure that it's not out of whack and just conscious, uh, like probably 90% of your problems will go away. Just somebody there. It's negligence that's gonna cause the bad sound, sound bothering neighbors, um, you know, DJ's sloppiness. Ali, that's right from the setup through to the sets and the gigs. Like the yeah, all, yeah, the whole, all, the whole thing. The whole, the, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's yeah. kind of a might be like a, a you pass the baton situation because it's a little somebody. bit difficult if yeah. someone set up the sound and then the DJ comes up and it's all fucked up. Yeah, that's not on him. That's on no. the guys that set the thing up in the first place. Yeah, yeah. that's I what mean, you're saying. DJs, I think all of us can attest, especially play at Burning Man, we spent a lot of time like like learning how to do a little bit of fixing and stuff like that, because right. it is like right. this sometimes, but you, you really want to patch that up when, where you can with, with somebody that that is paying attention. I mean, that's the, yeah. the yeah. biggest yeah. That's, that's, that's responsible for your shit. You yeah. Know? yeah. Like, and it's not the same person every day, but... But yeah. like I'm saying, is it, you know, I played in cars and, the, and it's just fucked up, and I would never play in them again. Our cars? Are yeah, 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 own. and it's just yeah, horrible. It's and, and then cabs that have got it wrong from the get go. Right. And I don't want to play it. But, but if it's my own camp, I give a shit and I take Ali's point. Yeah. Right. If you pay attention from the get go, then That's right. and having someone who knows what they're doing, I don't. But uh, and before you even get started with any sound, the placement of your sound and thinking not just about where your sound is, but where your sound's going and who and, and who else's sound dream you're going to affect. Because you got your dreams, you want to do your thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you're bleeding over into someone's camp, you're totally shitting on theirs, you know. Because you that wasn't something that was well thought about. <coughs> so you know, when you when you have, uh, you know, because some, sometimes in years past, you know, you can find you should be like, wow, man, you know, everything was cool, but there was that one time where it's just like whenever anything got quiet, you know, we're just getting blasted, you know, by somebody else. But it's the kind of art medium that is just foisted on others also because they don't have a, a say, you know. It could be the most vulgar, whatever, anything else, and you can be like, you know what, I'm not going to pay attention to that. But try doing that with blaring fucking sound at Burning Man. This is not easy. It's, it's really tough, too. Like, we're an acoustic music camp, so we've gotten our whole mission completely <coughs> destroyed lots of times in regionals. Like, we're sitting there trying to play acoustic music on a small PA, and our neighbors are blasting unbelievably loud EDM or whatever with nobody even in their camp. Well, that's it. I was going to say also, like, you know, if you're, Contest. if you have a deep, the, the, the most ridiculous thing at Burning Man is you're driving, it's like, you know, midnight, and you're on 10 or 2 driving out of the Esplanade, and there's like a gigantic 
sound system and scaffolding and like this huge camp and there's a DJ playing like happy hardcore to zero people or the one speaker <laughs> who's been all night. Like at an ungodly volume. Like Whoa. if you're that guy or that camp, like nobody likes you. So <laughs> you, know, not you look ridiculous as well. Volume so like manage, you know, the big volume, volume, control. volume control. Manage like, you know, again, having somebody That's responsible so whenever somebody whenever you have music on, it's it's for, no, for whatever the sound, for whatever Burning Man is, whether you consider it like an art project, a grave, a community, like you have to be part of like what it is and your piece of it, you have to be responsible for it. Part of that is don't be the asshole with the giant sound system and playing happy hardcore at six Absolutely. in the morning with zero people and like pissing people off. You so know, when you're in 2016, it was Bass Inge, I was right on the side of us, from like, from like 2014, it was from like 12 to six in the morning, they played Psytrance every single night. So you didn't do anything all day long, but from 12 to five in the morning, you guys were playing Psytrance and nobody on your nobody on your there. function ones, and it's just like, we just like hated them. It's like, dude. Right. But if they play, did it at half the volume, people might show up also, yeah, and then it wouldn't piss off your neighbors. Like, <laughs> So this is where the conversation sort of yeah. kind of breaks out of just strictly being about sound and then about sort of diplomacy and, and working with your neighbors and a lot of the, the the moving parts that make Burning Man work well and the same like pressure points that make it break sometimes. So, I mean, I'm a real big advocate of uh, getting to know my neighbors. Uh, we learned that like within two minutes of our very first burn, just like, and I think that when you, the quicker you humanize them and they'll, they'll do the same, and it's a lot harder to be pissed off and not communicate with mm -hmm. somebody that you've actually met Connected. rather than otherizing them. Yeah. So, so we, that's like, I think. Time we, we did, but it's like sometimes, you know, like, oh, so be like, yeah, yeah, for sure. The next guy is like, Pfft. same thing. It's like, it's just kind of a hard, it's, it's a hard medium where some people like, well, like, some people in camp will agree to it, then the people that, were, that weren't there before would do the same thing. So it's like, like case, it was, it's too loud. Did you, did you find that it was yeah. the same person that was playing at night that you connected with during the day, or? There was some dude at night. It was just it's so, it's it. kind of, it's kind and of some other dude. It was with the example he's bringing up. It was the camp lead that we met beforehand, like before the gates opened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We gave them a breakdown of what our schedule was, and then on Thursday morning they do like a sunrise, not like super crazy music, but like yeah. am ambient style music, but pretty decent volume. Yeah. And they came over, and their complaint was with the camp lead. Their complaint, who I'd met because they were asking for me. Yeah. was that, well, they went to bed at four in the morning and now we're blasting music and that's not cool. And it's like, <laughs> we told you guys Thursday morning we were going to do it's this. Yeah, yeah. So we did meet with them and we did talk with them and then we, a week, like later on in the week, apparently things have changed. I'm a bit curious about you guys' sound, like your speaker placement. If you're on two o'clock, I mean, on, on 10, almost all of us are just what Burning Man's telling just us that we need to do. It's all straight out. And even then, we've, like, you know, up like sun, Saturday, Sunday, we've like been like, guys, you, we're gonna have a sound clash here because because of slight little and then yeah. adjustments and then make more adjustments. No, we're, so we're, we're, not, we're straight out and go quiet. But can, can I ask Ben and, and Como a question here? You, you guys, because you're not out there, but you've got big sound, and is it because of your time placement and what, when you do things? So, so noon well, until yeah, I mean, Sunday it's a day party. So, We've also been doing it in the and same so you spot can, forever. And we have a exactly. Really good relationship with Burning Man. But is it the tolerance been. now? Is that you know you yeah, guys? I mean, everyone pretty knows that if you're gonna if you're camping in our neighborhood, like you know what you're getting yourself during the day. Well, I've been, been yeah, yeah, so, I've been. Well, they, they, they choose you know in their application they, they choose to camp near us. So yeah. and with, like I said, we we've been there at first. Yeah. Um, the so there is tolerance time. given yeah. to and time. Even if you're yeah, late, we also you don't can, go late, you can come you know. in a bit, and you're not late because yeah, we're we not start, late. And we start at low in the day, as in the morning. Yeah. We start low and we bring it up. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, Monitor it very well. And we, like I said, we have a we always have well. a good relationship with Burning Man. Like yeah, the, yeah. you know, they have never really considered sound camps art at Burning Man, and so they like yeah, we've yeah. never gotten a grant from them or yeah, anything like yeah. that, and we've never complained about that. It's a, it's not a democratic event. This is a Hello. private event that they yeah. run. Yeah. So we just like to have a good relationship with them. We don't want to piss people off, and they let us do what we want. And they, you know, we're always transparent about it. So, you know, again, like it comes down to just being good for the community. And like, uh, I'm around. just being yeah. selfish yeah. and thinking yeah. how I, mean, I like translate that 20. into my own well, I mean, placement I application. Can. I, mean, I would just like again, like honesty, I, and I think you were saying it about just be open about yeah. what you're doing because yeah. and don't like again, don't don't 
have like massive sound and have it clipping and sound like yeah. shit, and then people will bitch. It's the kind of situation that, that just demands one to be reasonable. You know what I mean? And, and, Common and, sense, really. You know, exactly. Like, you really got to apply it. Just, and you, you talk to people, and I, I, I've always noticed that there's generally been an openness. If somebody's coming at me, like, flustered and flabbergasted, I'm usually like, whoa, like, what's, what's really... Like okay, if we're fucking with you this hard. I want to know, you know, and, and maybe make adjustments. Um, this group started like real small, and I was thinking that we would just do Q and A. The original plan was a, a larger group that would break into little sections, you know, and, and some people would get their their questions answered. I, I'm thinking we could still sort of do it all. Um, I mean, we only have like 35 minutes. I feel like we should talk about like ask some people brought up some things they want to. Yeah, just so that's what I'm saying about. So I think we should. Yeah, in my opinion. So, really so with that said, do you guys, you guys feel like notice. your question is being answered? And these two guys in the back, they're good. You guys should so, definitely uh, uh, be Pablo. He's got one of the gnarliest sound systems you've ever seen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Pablo. I do the Mayan Warrior. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, <coughs> good audio. I've been doing this for like a long time since I was very young. And uh, I'm a big fan of like well-tuned, it's, it's a treat for us that like like uh, audio, you know, when you mm -hmm. encounter something that it's really well-tuned. I, I love to do that, so, so I try to to, to achieve that. Yeah. You guys are in shop. <laughs> yeah, you guys do a great job. <laughs> So I'm, I'm obviously a ranger, so yeah. as Bowman has probably already told you, what sound complaints are one of the yeah. biggest issues you get. So I'm trying to educate myself. Like you, I'm a fan of well-engineered, high-quality, even big sound, but also quality acoustic sound. So I'm trying to understand issues from the sound producer's point of view. Because we always hear the complaints from people who want to get some sleep. I understand their perspective. I, just, I want to understand more from your perspective. Having said that, I think the people in this room are not likely the people that we're going to have an issue with. <laughs> it's going to be some jacked up DJ at 2 in the morning who's decided that he has to turn it up to 11 in order to get his point across. So um, I'd like to, like, it encourages me that I hear from district about, uh, you know, making sure that you don't clip out your speakers so that your the people who are dancing enjoy it and so that you can attract good people. Um, I'd just like to hear more of that so that when I'm talking with um, people in a sound uh, issue dispute, I can help mediate better so that I can say, okay, so the people who are producing music have this point of view. You have a sleep issue. How, how, do, we find, how do we find a happy medium? Well, I think it comes back to what these guys were saying. I think it's setting expectations. I mean, district have been doing it for a long time. You know, my worry that, well, they're out there traveling all the time. But for the guys in camp, it's setting expectation as a new guy people don't know what to expect when they're next to my camp so i i take your point guys reach out let them know what's going on we did that a little bit also last year as somebody mentioned, oh yeah 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 to make sure that you're yeah. the lowest impact and also you don't want to just be out like even if you're on the, the one of the ten or two streets yeah it's like it, you, you don't want you want your speakers to focus your music on your dance floor not anywhere else because mm -hmm. otherwise you're wasting your sound system First of all, totally. then you're going to just be wild. Having, having said that, to, so placement is an issue, and I think specifically for me, the most sound complaints I've got, I'm not sure about Belmont or Coffee Cup, Hi, uh, Coffee Cup. are from um, sound art cars. And not to pick on sound art cars, <laughs> but blasting music through a quiet neighborhood right. at three in the morning is just not cool. Um, we all hear <laughs> okay, yeah. Can I ask you guys a question about Danstronauts? <laughs> them a few years ago, and they yeah. they ended up with some ban or something. What went on with that? Anyone? I don't know that we can really talk about. So, it. We do now. maintain a certain degree of um, confidentiality. But, but there must be, you know, the, I mean, it's common. Okay. If, if you, I got, let's put it this way. I'll leave it alone. It's it's real. No, it's a. I'm going to answer your question more generally. If you are repeatedly getting complaints from a large number of people, and those people have attempted to talk to you, and you have not attempted to work out a, an equitable solution that seems reasonable over a long period of time, and then three or four different ranger pairs all come to your camp and try to mediate, 
and you go, sure, sure, no problem, or yeah, no, it's cool, it's cool, we turn it down, and we literally hear you turning it up as we walk away, yeah, your dumb ass ain't coming back. <laughs> so don't be an asshole. Don't be a raging asshole is actually the yeah, okay. So actually, no, but this does bring uh, an important point. And there's talk about monitoring and having a person there to monitor stuff. If someone comes to you with a complaint, which can happen at any time when you are running your speakers, whether or not it is your camp running your speakers, you had better damn well have a person who can make agreements with the local area neighborhood or with the rangers showing up and have those agreements maintained for the rest of the week. So if you have like a shift system um, where somebody's on on Friday and Tuesday and someone else is on Thursday, you write that down and make sure it is there for the next person of like, hey, we agreed to do this yesterday. Because if we, because we do come down and we write that shit down, like you can't just be like, well, I told that ranger pair, but they won't be on duty tomorrow. We're writing that down. It goes into our logs. Placement knows later, by the way, how many times you got logged. If you get one sound complaint and then you fix your problem, placement goes, oh, well, they might have a slight issue, but eh, it's cool. You get seven sound complaints. Yeah. So make sure you have someone to talk to, and we'll work that out. We're not stupidly unfair. We're not going to come in and pull out the DB meters and you know. And, be like, oh, you screwed up one time, and that camp three blocks down hates you now, so you're going to be booted out of Burning Man and blacklisted forever. Like, we're actually very reasonable, but you actually have to be reasonable back. Well, and also, you know, it, to this point, you, look, you, know, you are expecting to have loud sound, and you don't know if your neighbors will. Talk to the rangers, like introduce yourself and the cops, yeah, and, and, and make sure that you have a good relationship with everybody. But mostly know? talk to your neighbors. Yeah, neighbors get actually. really good. One yeah. other piece yeah. too is about the overly loud sound. It's important that no matter how loud it is, whether it's district or mine or what, like, it shouldn't be hurt. You have a responsibility not to hurt people's ears. Like, because mm -hmm. people are out there off their tits and they don't realize that they're standing, they're so fucked up sometimes, they're standing five feet in front of, like, you see people in front of Robot Heart. Yeah. <laughs> Literally blowing out their ears. Yeah, let's be clear, you're on enough MDMA, you're totally gonna love those yeah. bass speakers. <laughs> but, but, but the great. reality is, like, the, the good sound is not going to hurt people's ears. They should still be wearing earplugs. Yeah, um, they're not but, but they should. If you have something blasting at 11 out of some shitty speakers, it, it gets so loud and such a high frequency that you will damage people's ears. And like, that's sort of on you. Like, you need to be responsible. If they're standing in front of the speaker like this or climbed in the cabinet or something, that's one thing. But, you know, keep in mind that that's also part of, if it's too loud for people, it doesn't sound good. Yeah, it's, it's just not necessary. I don't know, like there's just no, DJs, there, there are, there's a lot of them out there that will just habitually kind of turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, either because they're going deaf or because they don't have proper monitors on them, like we're talking about, and that's the, the part that you need to watch out for, but I think, you know, you don't need to have the biggest, I mean, you want to have a nice party, right, that's what people want to do, right. so you don't, that doesn't necessarily need to be the biggest, uh, you'll see more and more really, really sexy stuff going on at Burning yeah. Man in these little pockets. Yeah. Like these little small parties that you stumble on, and you're like, "Ooh, this is a vibe." You walk right in, and you're like, yeah. "This." I'm actually concerned with our thing getting like too big, to where the party stops being like that sexy little party that we we liked before. You know, now we're doing stuff in our tent, um, which to, to kind of maintain that 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 feeling that makes it so special and intimate. I mean, that's that's like, you know, not sound specific theory, but it's just. From throwing parties there, we feel that energy is nice. Well, things are, you don't need them to be that massive, and you definitely don't want to have a big, massive, barren situation that's empty. Well, you know there's what a mean? threshold to, between loudness and distortion. There's also, from a physiological standpoint, your hearing will shut down if you're, if you're exposed to loud noise, then, like you're saying, DJ, you keep turning, you keep turning, yeah. keep turning. Your hearing will actually shut down some. You shut down about 10, 15 dB um, on my like hearing test if you're, if you're subject to loud sound. So that's another thing. I don't understand. I see so many camps that have the two speaker DJ with the thing in the middle. And and I was sound, we actually had a, had, a, had a burn in northern Georgia. We had so many sound complaints because of the physicality of the burn from neighbors like a mile away that we actually had to have sound ranger team, which I was the head of for two years. And we, we did institute 20 dB at 90 feet. But you know most of the sound camps at that burn were not much bigger than this room. So there's a lot of lead. But even though I know that 
20, 90 feet at 20 feet is, is definitely bad for your ears. But if you'll stick to that number, you can have bleed. You can have this camp here and that camp right there and not have a whole lot of bleed. We had huge complaints. And one night, this is North Georgia. So one night, I said, okay, know your neighbors. Okay, here's an experiment. We had town complaints like every hour, neighbors, miles away. I said, from 11 o'clock to midnight, Friday night, Skinner only. <laughs> Skinner only. And we didn't have one. Well, that was a point. So, you know, I mean, know your neighbors, right? And also, like, you got to keep in mind that it's not how loud you have it, also, it's also how loud your low end is because that's um, unidirectional. So it goes every, even if you have the sub facing out, it's going backwards regardless, unless you ran away or something. If y'all would just push more bluegrass. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, a, you know, another thing, like if you're playing music at night and you're not supposed to be because you're in the neighborhood or something like that and you have the low end fucking rocking, you're vibrating everybody's yeah, everybody yeah. and everything's rattling inside and then you're going to make people angry again. Rocking you know? the book. <laughs> and so, you know, it works out. But I, you just have to be, you know. Everyone knows you can put pads on the sense, stuff, though, right? Is, yeah. Hey, if you have like DJs on there, also they're playing something that just feels wildly inappropriate to you, and it's your camp, your rig, your you know. I, if you really get a bad feeling from it, maybe it's like, hey, guy, this is not the the vibe. Because if you're feeling that, and other people are feeling that, it's probably not. There's such a thing as as like wildly inappropriate programming. Happening. I mean, I don't want to like dictate what that is. I mean, I'm sure me and Fixer have a different idea of what what that, that means. But, but uh, you know, like you, you want, you, you know, you know, you know when it's wrong. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying. And, and it's up to us, like people that that are bringing the, these rigs, um, and and the people that are going to be in trouble if things go bad, to say something when we feel something doesn't feel right. You know, I, I think. think. And have, like, that point, though. have like, could you speak to that a bit? I mean, because you've had a long history, and have you had to change your volume and, and expectations? No, no, but certainly, like, follow the Over rules the of years. what were to face the, 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 the system. And I think uh, that the reason why the the, um, the zone, what's the name of the zone? The, the, the DMZ? The DMZ exists, is, I think, when they were facing the, the, the temple for, yeah. for a yeah. whole yeah. night. And, 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 and I think, like, the whole... The whole of center camp was, was like complaining about about this. Yeah, it's South deep quiet. Um, our cars make like you should not be making a sound complaint. Seriously, don't aim it at a camp. Don't aim it at the temple. Yeah. Um, don't actually come up to an art piece where it's really inappropriate for you to be doing this. Like, oh, this is this art piece that's a memorial to, and you're doing happy hardcore. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's, okay. It's put your sound where it belongs. For most camps, that means on your dance floor. And for our cars, that means drive to a place and cur and designate a dance floor that is appropriate, and you're going to be fine. You can blast yeah. some pretty big music if you're out, out in the where it's appropriate. Yeah. You know, trash fence. Sure. Trash fence. Trash fence is basically <laughs> the only place where else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the other thing is uh, that goes along with what somebody was saying a minute ago. But also, if you're at a camp and it sounds bad. Go tell the DJ like they will not bite your head off. You know, like well, an ambassador. You know? Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, 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 sometimes they will. Yeah, sometimes. Dude, this sounds like shit. Like, uh, maybe turn down the band a little bit because yeah, yeah. it's clipping or it sounds. Yeah, yeah. You know, like people appreciate that as yeah. if you're playing music, and that's whether it's you're playing if it's a live band or if it's a DJ. Like if it sounds bad, just let them know. Like maybe you know find the person that's responsible or be like a bit of an ambassador for. Helping to solve the problem. <laughs> it happens at well, other festivals and stuff like that too. Or like, but like you know, even in clubs, you're like, yo, this is loud. You know, I, I've said that a million times, and and like nine hundred ninety nine thousand, somebody come like somebody else is like, you're right, it is. They're they they agree right. and they want to turn it out because that happens. You know what I mean? It, you might have sound for you know five hundred people, but now you have one hundred twenty people. It's a, a lot different level of sound that you need. You know, when the room clears out, it's not good anymore. Well, to, 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 I'm sorry, I don't right. remember your name, but to your point, so. as people also, including the DJ, at, once you're in a room, uh, whether it's a nightclub or just in front of a sound system, for 10, 15 minutes, 
you start to not, it's, you start to need to turn it up louder and louder. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. when I started DJing at a club, the monitors are at like a pretty reasonable level. By two hours in, I have them peaked because your hearing just shifts. That's what happened last So time. a lot of times the people who are DJing or playing music or whatever don't, they can't tell. So it's appreciated to say like, hey, turn it just a little bit. You know, if you have a sound engineer at a big camp like one of ours, that's a different story. They're dealing with it. But for smaller camps that, that just, they don't have somebody that's like necessarily tuning it all the time. They will appreciate that. The DJs should be amenable if they're not. A lot of mixers out there have a piece of tape and a little note on them, right? Like to show you, hey, stay out of the reds. And DJs need that reminder. Like, yeah, maybe I should stay out of the reds. Maybe I'm an asshole if I'm deep and in I the And I still red. spend the majority of my week telling DJs to stay out of the reds. Yeah, we had a whole, we had a whole, a whole incident with one, one, one of the biggest on the mainstays at the end of the cast, but well, we won't have that this year because because he flipped out when he was told, get out of the red. Uh, well, and another thing, actually speaking of that, so this is shifting a little more to like engineering, but if you can afford it, you, could, you can also have a compressor in your system. So if people start really peaking it out, it'll you know, shut it down so you can't max it out, clip, and have it sound really bad. Um, well, that well, that's the thing. You know, well, what, what happens is, what is, is like the, 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 the DJ wants knowledge. to make it louder out on the dance floor, and he, re, you know, that that's his idea. Regardless of however he's got it in the booth, he doesn't realize that there that that there's someone that can, that keeps the volume on the dance floor at a certain level. I have a limiter installed, and that's the argument. I mean, what happens is the DJ will start turning it up, and it'll start getting into the red then more into the red. It's actually not getting louder on the dance floor, but it's starting to sound distorted now. It's just starting to sound like shit. Just more like shit, and more and more like shit. <laughs> and it's just like, look, no matter what you do, you can turn it up all you want. Now, if, if you want it louder, I'm the sound guy. I can make it louder. We, we get it going, and that's what I mean by like game staging the evening. Mm -hmm. I'm in control of how loud it really is gonna be. And the DJ, well, as long as they keep it out of the reds, we're gonna have this great relationship. We're gonna work together, and the whole thing's gonna sound awesome and not too loud or this distorted shit sound that ends up happening because the DJ kind of wants more and more. You know, I think because I'm the first one to understand that it needs to sound great and it doesn't need to be loud to sound amazing. So did everyone, I heard a bunch of questions of what's a compressor, has everyone figured out from context what that is? Limit, it would be a limiter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I do, a lot of people are talking about sound only in the form of clipping and it's sounding like shit. But again, the other issue is you have neighbors probably for a lot of you, not all of you. Um, and that is the other sound limit. You cannot make up for people not being on your dance floor by cranking the music even louder. In fact, if you're doing that, you probably have it too loud already, and that's probably why there aren't any uh, people on your dance floor. Um, one of the things I would really strongly recommend is when you get the sound up to a level that feels good for the night, go walk around to your neighbor's camps. If you're walking, if you're going up to someone else's tent and you're like, this is a good sound to dance to right here, <laughs> you fucked up. Like, you want the good sound to dance to on your dance floor. And you want enough sound outside your dance floor that people go, hey, is that, I like, I want to go to that dance floor to dance to that, not I want to stay a block away from that dance floor to dance to that. Can I ask a question that's not related to volume? Because um, I figure that some of you have, who bring in a lot of really high-end gear have this mastered, which is dust protection. <laughs> what, are your, what are your tips and best practices mm -hmm. for dust protection? Dust protection? Yeah. Well, okay, so yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, the so <laughs> there, there's, yeah. there's three or four sure. things you can do. Three first, first of all, every time that you're not playing, you take the things away. They get, they get vacuumed and then blown, right? Mm -hmm. Vacuum, then blown off, and or, or is it that, that's the order, right? So either blown or then vacuum or vacuum and then blown uh, and then wiped like, yeah. like, yeah. like a like a with a blower. We keep a um, like a leak blower. But those cans are great, those aerosol <laughs> cans. I mean, in really dusty situations, you want those just always around and just ready to ready to dust. Vacuum is tougher because you know so they, they disappear and stuff like We're that. We're switching this year too. I think y'all have the center camp where you have like a Behringer 
with an iPad. Yeah, instead of yeah, real board. yeah. The, the, it does happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we're switching that to this year because it just needs mixing. You know? yeah. I mean, we're in a Houston music camp, so we're using a 16 channel mixer. Every channel kind of needs to work. You know? well, well, that's the thing, you know. It, it, we, you know, when you have faders, faders are the actual enemy. And have the analog faders at yeah. Bernie Man, those things are going to get dusted in them no matter what, and they're going to die. Um, that's, that's I would the recommend thing. buying yeah. a can of the oxider and a fader spray, too. Uh, well, you know, that's the thing. It's like, yeah, you can work with that, and maybe when you get off the playa and you do a full clean, well, I mean, did it really even survive? Did it really even make it? <laughs> you never know. We made three six or eight CDJs and two or three mixers. As yeah, even in JK, you know, we, we would we wouldn't rent um, uh, like CDJs or mixers because well, we just know they. You, know, you never know. Man. I have stuff yeah. that looks like brought up out of the bottom of the ocean, you know, and it works great. And then I have a <laughs> brand new Yamaha 16 channel board or something that craps out in two hours. You know? So you just mm -hmm. some stuff is just I don't know. So a well-protected iPad, uh, as long as you don't get uh, you know, sun on it directly, you know. Uh, so you can get a mixer. It, it can, can work out. Yeah, you can get a, a mixer unit that's all self-contained, you know, so all, there's no faders on it. It's just using an iPad to mix. If you're mixing, like, real news. Have Paul, what do you have you know, yeah. for dust? Yeah, so um, we do have spare CDJs. We, we know they're going to fail, so that's a fact. I and mean, we, we can cover them, we're, we're not using them. But um, what works very good is after the burn. Uh, I mean, you have to, of course, open everything up, right? And there is this uh, fish oil <laughs> 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 that uh, is made out of uh, the skin of a fish. So it has this property that it propels um, uh, water, right? So after cleaning all of the electronics, you basically dip everything in this uh, oil. Really? Yeah, and that, that, that's what we, we, we got that from uh, the, the main phone carrier for the south of Mexico in the Caribbean. <laughs> when they started st installing you know, their infrastructure, it will fail every four months because of the saltiness of the, of the zone, right? So, and they discovered this liquid, and they sell it in gallons. So basically, you can like, put in, 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 the, in the liquid uh, uh, amplifier which is on, you know? but with, with, with power, it will still function. Wow. Yeah, so, so is, is that uh, crazy? So, so, you're so, a crazy man. Is this, <laughs> you're a crazy man. Yeah, yeah. It's worth some money right now. Brian's a fish into it, problem solved. No, no, and it, it doesn't smell like fish. Of course. The, the product of the what, what? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll send okay. you the, the, the link. But uh, basically, you clean your gear, then you soak everything in that, and then you come back to the burn, and that's the only way to to get uh, any gear to last for more than four years. Actually, the yeah. corn yeah. is made from fish oil. Exactly, it has the same. So it's basically a, a the, the same thing, but without the, the grease. Mm -hmm. so there's a solvent in WD forty. Which is the same, the right. same, uh, but, but it's the, the oil fish thing. thing. Yeah. yeah. The other thing is you want to clean everything as soon as possible after this, especially the electronics, because it just starts to eat away the right. electronics. That uh, the alkaline soil just uh, gets everything away. Or just return it right away. The guitar. <laughs> 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 well, I, I mean, the, 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 the Amazon it's insurance it's also works. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's people who do this. No. So we have 15 minutes. Should we, is there anybody's question? Yeah, let, 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 let's see. How, how do you guys feel? Like, we'll, 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 one question questions? I had. So we, we we're still, I say limping along with Mackie's, but I still like it maybe because when we first started, it literally was like my speakers. And we still like, I guess we describe it as kind of a, a, a punchy or rich sound. But if we were to convert, what would we really be gaining? So if we switched to... You know, a kind of a central powered system. What would be the advantage? Is it? It would be because we're going to get better volume. Is it that we don't think we have as much clarity or yeah, punch as we think? More control, I would say. Also, you have a, a you create a clean environment. You could keep all your amps in a in a, in a vent in a well like, temperature controlled cleaner environment to keep the dust out. Um, that's a, a, a big bonus. Yeah. Um, and if a powered speaker fails, then that's it. Yeah. It also, is <laughs> unpowered speakers and amps <coughs> that back up. Well, and, and it removes all reheating. I'm sure you guys have had that happen yeah. out there. The back, the sun hits the back of Mackie, and they'll die. They overheat yeah. all the yeah, time, and they go in and out. Yeah. You know, there's definitely an advantage. And so they get the, the sound is like, you, 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 
if you have like a central power source versus like daisy chaining the Mackies together, like you're gonna have better sound yeah. for sure. And definitely more control. more control over the different um, frequencies. I mean, it's gonna be more expensive, obviously. Yeah. But overall, I feel like there's also when with those map with the powered Mackies, when they die, they're pretty much done. Can you hybrid? Can you use powered and non-powered? Well, yeah, a lot, a lot of people do passive. it for the for, with for their monitors. Active they'll use the little yeah. powered speakers. Powered and then passive for all the. And I gotta be honest, like not to knock the Mackies, but I think that the powered speaker, my favorite is the QSC. If you're gonna go out and buy a pair, I think they, they like test yourself, but the 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 wooden one, the KW12. KW122s, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. those are solid. The other ones are nice too. They're plastic and they're lighter. They're good for like traveling around the, the K12s. But the those QSCs are they're bulletproof. They don't overheat that that frequently. They have a nice little fan, and and I think that for a power speaker for the price, that's the, I mean I'm yeah, selling an advertisement. It's the best bang for your buck if you're going to go that route. And it depends on like what you're how big you're going to go. Like you, you know with an R-car, uh, R car the size of Dusty Rhino. You know, you guys could up the ante and get like a full system. And also, if, if one of your speakers goes down, you can, they, actually they won't most likely go down if there's no electronics in it, it's just the speaker. There's no like power source and all that, like power speakers. They tend to like, you just blow them out, wipe them down, pull the speaker out, whatever you gotta do to clean it, and it'll work again. But the power, with all the electronics and the power speakers, I mean, we, we've gotten some use out of them. We destroyed a lot of them. Yeah. But after, they just tend to like malfunction more they're like part of the family. Like you, you nurse them back to health. <laughs> You're like, oh, he's acting that way again. Don't worry about it. Like just turn it down for a little bit. It's a little mac and cheese. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, yeah, he'd be the guy to ask the question for like our car sound. <laughs> yeah, we, we started with uh, HK. You know that brand? Mm -hmm. They're pretty good. I mean, the, the sound amazing is is they're not self powered. I mean, the sub is self powered, and the, there is where the, the amp is, but. Yeah, they, 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 they can withstand like very harsh environment. Mm. They sound pretty well. Yeah. There's like you know I mean there I think for your R cars there's like three totally different routes you can go. You know you can go Pablo's route is uh, you know like a line array like a proper concert sound system. Yeah. It's a it's a specific type of sound. It's got like maximum maximum clarity um, and it's really upfront and honest. Uh, but you'll like if, like Robot Heart, for example, is point source sound, um, which has the benefit of being like very immersive. You kind of swim in that sound. You know what I mean? Ours is that too. Function mm -hmm. is this. Um, and then like there's a new art card, uh, Sanctuary. Next time you around, see that thing. That's the a, a Danley rig. It's like the, the most ridiculous point source situation ever. So this is a speaker called Jericho. Mm -hmm. It's the most monster speaker. I mean, it's. Just, it's like it's a four by eight speaker. You know, it's got two of those. It, it, it's it's absurd, um, it's and that's more really than really. Speakers inside huh? of it. It's a yeah, exactly. It's sanctuary. Like a, uh, sanctuary. sanctuary. It's a big church. The church, yes. With sanctuary. the with the nastiest yeah, yeah. laser and like a, some speakers that that uh, that nobody's ever ever seen before. Uh, it's pretty. It's pretty fucking cool. Uh, I would say too. I could definitely put you in, in touch with some reps of like say Function Water Void or Downley. If you want to go that route, I can put you in touch with those guys directly. Okay. And you'll have less problems overall if, you have, if you're not. Yeah, we're not we're not shooting for this year, but quietly we just we complain about it, then we get back out there, we kind of limp by. It's it's, well, it's like always been good enough, through, and yeah. so you know we're still kind of fifty fifty. But I just figured I'd learn a little bit more. So that's okay. You, you see more trouble from fly dust than because I'll even deliver them in the winter actually. Oh really? So is my warrior at home sometimes down there too? Yes, yes. So do you see more problems with salt water issues? For sure. Than, than playa dust? Yeah. yeah. The, like, the, the playa dust on the long run, because of the fluctuations, oh, because of the fluctuations of the, uh, the humidity in the air, it makes that the, the, all the system rust. But uh, Tulum, when we do the, the, the party there, yeah. you know, just by being there for a week, it comes back like everything, like, very in bad condition, yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, it's like the, the, the worst combination. It's like alkaline and then yeah, salt water. Yeah, 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 yeah. Word. So, fish oil. Like <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's so fishy about that answer. <laughs> I got a question for you all. So, again, Ranger, um, I'm gonna, I'll load the question and I'll ask the question. 
Um, so the first thing is I would say for those of you who have concerns about uh, dealing with your neighbors and all that, uh, get out there, meet them first, and tell them who to talk to. Yeah. If well, I'm not at my camp, go talk to Joe. He's the guy who can deal with it because my experience as a ranger is the DJ is the worst person to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> the DJ doesn't care. The DJ is into their music. Right. And the they believe that, or, or, well, it's usually the DJ. It's, kind of like it's the music. DJ. The DJ is into their music, and they believe that if they just make it louder, people will believe. Right, 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 right. So you got to tell your neighbors who to talk to. Um, now, my question on the flip side of that is, how do you want people to come to you when there's a sound issue? Or who do you want them to go to? And, and how do you want that phrased or presented or like? Yeah, I mean, for, like for district, we have, you know, obviously our sound engineer. We also have a camp a manager every day that is also wearing a unique vest that we can point people, can point people to. Some of them are like, who can I talk to? They're like, that person. You know, we have a designated person that <laughs> is strictly there for that reason. Yeah, we do. And, and you guys are really that. present there, as, as Pablo is at Maya Warrior, as you'll almost always find me in Casba. Yeah. Uh, we like a manager of the day, sort of, the, because we have a lot of different shit going on. We have the backup camp, we have the sound, we have the bar, we have bike parking, we have the bike battalions. That's a big one. Uh, <laughs> 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 we can talk about for hours. How many shifts does that person pull? We're looking to do the same thing with like four people. I call it Noah, number one asshole. <laughs> Somebody's always a Noah. Yeah, that's the way. We have like good, right? We have like nine people kind of year round. <laughs> so the, the, the most responsible of the, you know, we just have the most bought in. Um, so we're generally the people that, that what you can manage the day. Yeah. Then we break it. We have like so we have a staff manager. Like there's like a huge staff manager. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We have there's always like um, somebody to go to that's like at the cares and is going to like take care of so and so and the nice thing to do is sort of breed a culture where like all your campers care enough to like try to help with the problem yeah. and like we reiterate that and by all I mean like hopefully 10% but you know, like, <laughs> like, like, you know I mean like let's be realistic but but you really do try to we, I mean, we're always preaching this kind of shit at dinner and stuff like that like everybody got to you know take ownership like if you see some, somebody's looking around for something like that you know step up help them out hospitality should be at the core of what we do that being said pro tip if you don't know when you're talking to your neighbors if you're like gonna go talk to them about something good something bad when you go to introduce yourself sick move come bearing gifts it's it's I'm serious it really like I learned that from like minute one from our neighbors and I was like that's this is a power play that's well that shit works there was like a little something something you got something you have something bring that shit It'll, it, it works and then and then everybody's everybody's friends is so much easier to like negotiate once the ice is broken there's a little cohesion amongst your group and I think that's a lot of what we're getting at at Burning Man period it's, like, well, it's also again like to that point have somebody that's responsible you know somebody that cares about the sound or the camp or whatever that, that leader is for the day or the hour or whatever like this is not rocket science of being like a good person you know if it sounds if it doesn't sound good to somebody next door it probably doesn't sound good most likely they're not going to complain if it's if, if okay, I won't say that because you never know you <laughs> can't be next to you and didn't know it but like if you're doing something irritating then they're going to come complain about it so don't do something that, you know just be a responsible individual because a lot of people go out there they're not there for dance music they're there for bluegrass or they're there for the art they think that the rave camps are hell so like just remember that that everybody is out there and they, they aren't necessarily there for the music and hell is all the way at the end of 10 o'clock <laughs> <laughs> like way past i think to answer your question i think it, i i I know that just the way that we've handled or we've listened to complaints is there is kind of a severity level. And it's, you know, there's one that you can couch it, you say, look, I think this sounds great, but you got two or three people, you know, you can kind of couch it in a soft way. The other is, hey, I just want to let you know this is about to become an official complaint. If it's delivering it from you, it already probably sounds official enough. But we try to figure out who, where's the complaint coming from? Were Rangers involved? 
like how severe was it and if it's a this is basically one that's going to go on your permanent record that could affect your placement next year kind of thing like you deliver with that level of severity then somebody's going to go, I'm going to go deliver that to the right people if it's not in the cell. Another thing that you guys mentioned was did you say was it Ben you said you, your people in charge have a coat or? Uh, yeah generally the uh, yeah, it varies. Because we, 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 yeah. we started doing it last <laughs> year. We started doing it last year, and anyone coming into camp sees the orange jacket, and they, and they already take it seriously. And so, yeah. when someone ends up at camp or they're talking to someone with the coat and the hat on, yeah, we're just like, dude, you know, some ways it makes them identifiable easily. Like, go talk to that person wearing that hat or wearing yeah, that works for us. It's, it, and it comes down to planning too. Like you know, plan this stuff before you get to Burning Man. Don't when you get there. Oh, oh, you're not doing anything. You're in charge of the sound building. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the worst person to be in charge of sound level is the DJ. That's not the well, Yeah, I know. Probably most of us play that. Well, he's also your first line of defense. You know what I mean? That's the oh, yeah, number one person. Sure. Okay, we need to be at this level, DJ. You need to turn down. So if you have some line of communication between yeah, while they're the DJing, manager. Whatever. Come on, Andy, that's Bigger. like blaming everything on the banjo part. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you may want to consider telling your DJs, if you get a sound complaint, here's who you should take that to. Because it, you do not want your DJ handling this for you and then walking the hell away, which is what we see a lot of the time. You want your DJ, if that happens, to first of all, take it down a little bit, but also maybe notify, hey, by the way, I just had yeah, this just happened. No, it's good luck. Notice that having the DJ actually tell you this. <laughs> so that's, that's a best practice thing for for sound camps, really, right there. I mean, tell your DJ where to go, what yes. to do when somebody right. comes to you, instead of being they, they being responsible for the thing. Yeah, because Rangers, do you see more complaints on like smaller camps, just a couple of speakers, and then it's uh, in the city more than I mean. I mean, obviously, they're not going to get a big complaint typically. Well, I mean, but, but who? Well, the there's more, more of those. Well, in city, those? obviously, we get more complaints because there's more people to complain, uh, right? If my employer goes out to the trash fence, uh, we're not getting shit because there's no one to complain there except the people who went, oh, what's that my employer over there? I think I'll go listen to it. Um, we, t I tend to personally, I mean, I was just talking about my own experience, but I have been doing it for 11 years. Um, I tend to get it, first of all, from those setups that are the like, wow, you have no monitor speaker, your speakers are in front of the DJ, mm -hmm. they're not hearing anything. Um, or from ones where the DJ is, there's nobody from the camp, it's just the DJ out there doing their thing, who have, like, I know one camp that was, they were trying really hard to do a really good job, and what they didn't realize was they had left the sound system available, and random DJs were popping on between <laughs> 1 and 6 a.m., bumping the music all the way up, so they got about 12 sound complaints without anyone in the camp knowing. Now, this is on them because, for God's sake, how do you not notice that your sound is going full blast from 1 to 6 a.m. every freaking night? What were you thinking? Um, but, like, so we get a lot of that DJ who doesn't give a shit about your camp. They're just there to rock their music. And if I can only play my music a little louder, people will maybe come to my stage finally. Um, and setups where the DJ that can't hear anything. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, the other big one is just if we have to talk to you a whole bunch of times, and it's because it's just somebody gets out there, they go, yeah, 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 sure, 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 go away. I want to keep having my party. Um, so that's like the big one, and then it was as it was mentioned, sound vehicles driving through. Like, yeah, we're gonna cruise past Hushville, uh, you know, rocking out. Um, like, your sound should not even be coming close to 90 dB at 20 feet if you're driving through city streets, right? right? You should be at a level that is like, if someone was like nearby, they'd hear it and go, "Oh, do I want to hop on that art car and really listen to that music?" But it shouldn't be the dance floor is a block away from your from your uh, thing. So those are the big ones driving through and doing that, or the unattended DJ, or the just DJ can't hear anything. So, so what do you guys think? It's, oh, that's all, that, was, feel, sorry, that all feels pretty basic, right? If, if one was to make these mistakes, it's it feels kind of amateurish when you once you really like think about it. So I think that that's the number one thing, you know, think about it and then sort of lead that by example. Make sure that when you're not there to maintain it, somebody else is and kind of just disseminate the information, you know? Well, common sense is not common. Uh, we do not have dedicated sound rangers, but like, hi, I am one. Um, like, we have a number of us. Like, we we have training in sound related stuff to a degree, and then how to come talk to people. Because um, you do have like RV interviews, you know, to go around right. check on RV leaks and stuff. We we do not have a dedicated special team, but we are trained to deal with it. Uh, but mostly, it comes down to all we're doing. We're conflict mediators. That's our job is to mediate. Yeah. We're not coming out there. We don't actually want to pull out a 
damn sound meter. Our job is to make sure that you're happy and the camp near you is happy. And we really want to find a place where that is possible. And if you can make your camps near you happy, we're never going to complain. Do, would it be helpful to collect what you have told, which is recorded there, and come up with some best practices list and run it by different people here and then communicate it to other people? Well, I actually, um, Placement put out a thing that I actually wrote okay. two years ago oh. that when they went out to the uh, Burning Man Theme Camp Leaders uh, Facebook okay. group. That was actually, actually it was me, being, no, I'm sorry. In the group, I made a snarky post um, about it, and then they posted it out to everyone who made Amplified Sound. That was actually my writing. Maybe we'll get to it again. Uh, yeah, thing. sure. We'll can, <laughs> so, I can also, tell them to copy the same damn thing. Yeah, also, if anybody has any questions, I'm just going to email Ben or I. I'm Kramer at district.org and Ben at district.org. So Great. feel free to, you know, if you have questions or get your shit together for Burning Man, even you know, if it's camp related versus sound specific related. Okay, well, the most it's even easier is to do music at district.org. Right? <laughs> That's true. Um, and, I mean, I think the best practice is situation, I mean, it's common sense for most of this. Keep in mind, you know, have a plan. It, louder is not necessarily better. Be good to your neighbors. Like, have a responsible party at all times, running your sound, or somebody there that can adjust it. You know, make sure you... You know, talk to the DJs before you go out to Burning Man and let them know, like, hey, this is what the sound system we have, this is the gear we, the, the DJ gear we have, like, don't turn it up to 11 on the mixer, like, no, you know, whatever your parameters are, like, just be clear up front. You know, that's like, actually that's a really good point there. A lot of DJs who do the festival scene are used to, you go to a place where there's a stage, and you crank the music, and there's no one sleeping nearby. Um, that is true for a huge number of festivals. If you can tell your DJ, one of your jobs is to make sure the neighbors are still able to sleep, um, and this is not applied to the 10 and 2 camps so much, but if, if that's one of their jobs, then they might actually think about it instead of just blaring the sound louder, which is totally okay at other festivals, and not necessarily. And also, as you start to learn this stuff and kind of get more proficient, share the information with, with, with others and keep it going, because it's like, not only us that are, have issues, right? Like, there's loads and loads and loads of others, you know? You know Thanks, thank you. Thank you.